Hello friends, this is Dennis Calhoun of the Old North Church in Marblehead, Massachusetts. We're an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. And no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Delighted that you're worshiping with us this week. And before we get started, I'd urge you to find the Show More button on your YouTube screen so that you can see the bulletin and follow along. And of course, if you'd like to contact us to be on our email list or for any other reason, call 781-631-1244 or email us at office at onchurch.org. Now let's take a moment to take a deep and cleansing breath of the Spirit of God as we prepare our hearts and minds to worship in spirit and in truth. Beloved people, our hearts were made for the glory of God. Let us open our hearts to reflect that glory. Beloved people, we were created in the image of God. Let us live our lives in the likeness of God. Beloved people, we have gathered to worship together. Let us lift our hearts and minds and hands to God. Hello, church. I'm Lindsay Popperson, your associate minister. Our prayer of invocation this morning comes from the poem, Listen, Lord, by the poet James Weldon Johnson. Please, will you join me in a spirit of prayer? Oh, Lord, we come this morning, knee bowed and body bent before your throne of grace. O oh Lord, this morning bow our hearts beneath our knees and our knees in some lonesome valley. We come this morning like empty pitchers to a full fountain with no merits of our own. O oh Lord, open up a window of heaven and lean out far over the battlements of glory and listen this morning. when we are out of words, when our hearts are full of fears and hopes too deep to express, Jesus gives us the words to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the light of his love, Christ calls us to examine our consciences and reflect on our living. Our confession today will be a series of questions followed by pauses for reflection. Am I at peace within myself? Do I accept that I am profoundly loved and need never be afraid? Am I keeping myself open to the source of being, the great compassion? Have I caused suffering to another? Am I attentive to the voice that calls me towards courage and service? Am I willing 
to accept the mercy and forgiveness that God is so eager to give. Amen. People of God, we are, all of us, works in progress. We are all of us broken people living in a broken world. But here is our hope. Our God has given us to each other to tend and heal and bear and comfort and accompany. Let us extend God's deep mercy to ourselves and to one another, so that love might grow and flourish in our community. Amen. Good morning, my name is Karen Kilty. I'm the Director of Children's Ministries here at Old North Church. This is the time in the service for moments with children, children young and young at heart. It's hard to believe that it is September and the new beginnings that September would normally bring are very, very different this year. Back to school, whether at school building or at home, it's all a new way, very different. I've been thinking of you children, your families, your teachers, and all of the administrators and support staff. Although so much is different, there's still things, these new beginnings that still need to be celebrated and looked at in a different way. Over these last months, we have learned new ways of navigating changes. I spent a few days at the church the last few weeks it was the first time I'd been there since March 8th. That was the last time that we gathered. The first few minutes there felt very strange. But as I looked around, there were so many things that the children have made that filled the emptiness in our time away. There were several weaving projects that were finished and some were just started. Lego buildings that were built on that day. A pan flute that Noah made with straws and tape still sitting on the table. I've missed our time together, but these reminders of you made me smile and brought back happy memories of our time at Old North Church. As I walked through the church and remembered the many familiar faces, the words spoken, the beautiful music and voices of the choir, I'm grateful for these memories and know that our times of new beginnings are just waiting for us at the church building. But in the meantime, we will do our best to continue gathering like this through recordings or to seek new ways to be Old North Church wherever we are. 
as we think about what worship and gathering and community looks like in a new way, I was thinking back to the annual ski trips. Before even gathering on the first night in New Hampshire, Mark Robert had gathered us. He sent emails and texts that bonded us with the anticipation for what a special time we would have together as Old North Church people, but up in New Hampshire. The first night was dinner provided by the youth group at Roy and Heather Martin Ski Club. Along with the Kay family and other youth, they welcomed us on that cold and snowy night. The tables were filled with friends, old and new, good food and good stories. On Saturday, we had time together on the mountain, skiing for some and for others, watching out the window in the lodge, holding spacers for, spaces for skiers as they came in to warm up. It was fun to greet them, hear their stories, watch them have a bite to eat, and just sit and listen. So many sweet moments were captured around that table. A little bit of church business and a lot of sharing of who we are, were and who we were to one another, young and young at heart. Everybody had a story to share. Back at the end, it was time for more time around the table for meals and conversation, s'mores around the fire, and then Sunday morning. Shoveling snow off the benches, many hands quickly preparing our outside sanctuary for church in the snow. Becca and Isla, they led us in song and listening to the voices of our children that shared words of hope and invitation for inspiration pieces of scripture and other inspiring words like Matthew. Come to me all who are weary and I will give you rest. And be somebody who makes everybody feel like somebody. And from Isaiah, do not panic, I am with you. There is no need to fear for I am your God. I will give you strength. I will help you. I, your God, have a firm grip on you and I am not letting go. All good words that sent us on our way. And as we said our goodbyes, as we head home, some of us weren't quite ready and decided to stop along the way to do a little ice skating. For some, it was ice skating. For some of us, it was hot chocolate and watching. We saw horses and a wagon go by and lots and lots of cheering on. Tegan dazzled us with spins and twirls on the ice and some ventured out to skate for the first time in a long, long time, victorious. And a dad and his son racing, both to success, all such beautiful moments to treasure. We are church, we are Old North Church learning and growing in new ways, celebrating who we are, whether we're together in the sanctuary or we are at our homes listening. We do not know when we will gather at the church again, but we are a church. And thankfully, wherever we are, whether it's a mountaintop, an ice skating pond, thankfully we know that God is always with us, wherever we are. God is a God of new beginnings. So whether we're in classrooms this week, at home, daycares, or somewhere else, we are new. We are looking at things through a new vision, but remembering that we have each other and know that there is prayers on prayers that are sent out as we begin new school, we heal, we spend time together. We are love. Will you pray with me? Loving God, be with our children. Their teachers, their leaders, their caregivers, the administrators. Guide them into the new year. Whether we are close by together, next door neighbors, remind us who we are together and through God's love, who we can be, growing, learning, supporting, 
loving. Thank you for all these gifts, God, that we are learning along the way. We are blessed. Amen. Good morning. I'm Rebecca Earhart, and I'm a deacon here at Old North Church. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. So you, mortal, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked ones to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Good morning. My name is Catherine Redmond, and I'm a deacon here at Old North Church. Our second reading is from the 119th Psalm, verses 33 through 40. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. See, I have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. We have heard these words from Scripture. Let us find within them the Word of God. Friends, let's pray again. Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So you, mortal one, I have made a watchman. Crazy old Ezekiel, dreaming his dreams, seeing his visions, living in exile far from his home in Jerusalem, where his father had been a priest in the great temple. Crazy old Ezekiel, who had witnessed the destruction of that towering temple, who had wept with throngs of others at the sight of the smoking rubble, who'd shared the grief of a nation that had believed it could not happen to them, until one day it did. Crazy old Ezekiel, who in one of his fevered dreams hears the voice of God, so you, mortal one, I have made a watchman. Historians tell us that watchmen were a crucial part of the defensive systems of cities and nations in ancient times. Invading armies moved slowly, and they were not hard to see. Typically, watchmen were posted on the borders and on the hilltops and in towers on city walls. But the people of Jerusalem did not listen to the watchmen in the year 587 before Christ. As the invaders marched through their frontiers from Babylon, modern-day Iraq, with King Nebuchadnezzar at their head, 
The consequence of their failure to heed the warnings was made dreadfully clear as the people of Jerusalem wept at the smoldering ruins of their walled city with its magnificent temple. Then they were marched off into exile in a foreign land. The people had not paid heed to those who warned that their enemies were at the gate, that defeat and destruction was imminent. Those who tried to warn Israel had mostly been ignored, while the people grew complacent and self-satisfied. Those who governed in Jerusalem were sure that God was on their side, so there was nothing to worry about. But one horrible day, the city fell and the temple lay in ruins. The lesson about their need to be alert and watchful came at an unbearably high price. It was out of that experience, crazy old Ezekiel began to have his restless dreams and troubling visions. He saw fire in the sky and wheels in the air. In one of his visions, he heard a voice that said, So you, mortal one, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. In these recent days, we've heard the word warning in a whole new way. The chief experts and watchmen of public health in these United States have warned us against large gatherings on this Labor Day weekend. Last week, I heard a press conference with the governor of a state in the path of Hurricane Laura warn people that if they failed to heed the evacuation orders, their lives could be in danger with no one available to rescue them. The mayor of a town on the Louisiana shore was even more dire. He told people who chose not to evacuate that they should write their social security numbers on their arms so their bodies could be identified if they didn't survive. Dire warnings, to be sure. For the most part, we are a people who have learned to pay attention to threats. We've learned something about our vulnerability, and not just to the threat of catastrophic weather. From the continued threat of the coronavirus to the threat of foreign meddling in our presidential election, from the threat of losing a job or health care coverage to the threat of having our identity stolen by computer hackers. There's no shortage of things to worry about and dire warnings to heed. Crazy old Ezekiel, who had troubled dreams and visions in the months and years leading up to the destruction of Jerusalem in the Babylonian exile. But crazy old Ezekiel also had dreams and visions that nurtured the enduring hopes of his fellow exiles. Ezekiel spoke of future restoration for the nation of Israel and for the temple in Jerusalem. Ezekiel believed God would be Israel's shepherd and would usher in a future of peace and prosperity. In a dramatic scene, Israel's restoration is described as human bones coming to life. Those bones scattered in a desolate valley come together, become covered with skin and muscle, and miraculously come back to life. Some Christians find in Ezekiel's vision a foreshadowing of the resurrection of the dead. But it should be remembered that Ezekiel interpreted his vision as a metaphor for Israel's rebirth after her long years in exile. Dire warnings. Sounding them was the call of prophets like Ezekiel. But they also spoke of enduring hopes. The prophets were called by God to give voice to both. The Wheel of Seasons has brought us back to the start of what would ordinarily be a new season in church life. Labor Day is traditionally the last day of our summer slowdown around Old North Church, time to take one long last breath of leisure before getting back to normal. Of course, what is normal these days? 
We're still trying to figure that out. But even before our old patterns of church life were interrupted by a novel coronavirus, some observers of religious life in America had been sounding dire warnings about the survival of the mainline church in America. Watchmen in the form of pollsters were telling us that we are in decline, that our days are numbered. Dire warnings and enduring hopes. That's the thing about people of faith. We take our warnings with a side of hope. There's no question about it. We are living in an increasingly secular, some would say post-Christian era. The American religious landscape is undergoing a dramatic transformation. Church buildings are being shuttered or sold as shrinking and aging congregations find it financially impossible to maintain their once robust programs and physical properties. It's been estimated that across the country, 200 churches are closing every week. And that was before the pandemic hit. In their book, Vanishing Boundaries, The Religion of Mainline Protestant Baby Boomers, Dean Hodge and Benton Johnson and Donald Ludens suggest that a local church body or denomination that places few demands on its congregants and does not pay attention to the ultimate questions of faith will soon find itself on the sideline instead of in the main line. But here we are, mindful of the dire warnings and the enduring hopes people of faith have faced for ages. Here we are, people of faith. I wonder what moved you to tune into Old North Church on YouTube or to grab your beach chair and worship at the lighthouse. I suspect there are lots of reasons. Some of us come out of habit. Some of us out of hope, some out of guilt, some come full of compassion, some come full of pain, some come for the sake of the kids, and some come to make friends. The fact is, we come for all kinds of reasons and with all kinds of needs, but it doesn't matter what brought us together. What matters is how we get engaged in the mission and ministry we are called to do in this time and place. As many of you know, we spent the last several years in a process of discernment around our call as a local congregation and a review of our organizational structure. We spent time transitioning to a smaller, more nimble and streamlined board and committee structure with the goal of enabling members and friends of the church to get engaged in the work we do. Now our task has been amplified and complicated by the challenge of doing all of this from a safe physical distance from one another. We've heard the dire warnings about the danger of sitting side by side, speaking face to face, singing together, shaking hands or hugging, breathing the same air. Dire warnings that we would ignore at our own peril and the peril of those we love. Dire warnings about these strange and difficult days in which we find ourselves. Dire warnings about the future of our planet our nation, our health and well-being. But we've also heard enduring hopes, hopes of reimagining our ministry to meet needs we are only beginning to understand, hopes of finding new ways of being together as God's people, working together to share the love and justice God intends hopes of discovering new passion and energy for the mission and ministry Christ has called us to do. Dire warnings and enduring hopes. As we start a new season in our life together as a church, we will need to listen to the watchmen who warn us of the challenges facing churches in these challenging times. But we do so 
with the enduring hope that springs from our faith in the one who calls us together and sends us out to build the kingdom of God here and now. Thanks be to God who breathed us into being and promised to be with us always. Let us pray. Holy One, we have come from our scattered homes and varied lives in the hope that we might meet you here. May it be so. In this time and place you have hallowed, as you hallow everywhere people gather to seek you. Quiet our anxieties, calm our fears, soften our hearts, sharpen our minds. Open our eyes and help us see the traces of your presence, for we know there is nowhere we can be that you are not. Open our ears and help us to hear your words of warning, your call to action, your commandment to love, your summons to make peace and demand justice. Show us what it means to live according to your law of love, that we might bear witness to what is possible in the world you mean this to be. We offer our prayers in the powerful name and blessed Spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our generous God gives to us continually in each breath. We receive God's Spirit. Responding to God's generosity, let us give to God in thanksgiving. You can give to our church, Old North Church, electronically via this link, or you can send checks to the church office at 8 Stacy Street in Marblehead. We pray now in gratitude for all the gifts our church has received in the past week. We dedicate to you, generous God, our lives. Receive our offerings as a sign of our gratitude and commitment and make us faithful as we use them to further your reign in our world. We pray this for love's sake. Amen. Beloved community, the Gospels tell us that on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ was raised from death and appeared to Mary Magdalene. On that same day, he sat at table with two disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. We celebrate now the joyful feast of the people of God for all who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. Though we partake in our separate homes, we are joined together by eating one meal. I'm at my dining room table with my wife, Ashley. If you haven't yet, take this chance to set your communion table. All you need is something bread-like to break and something to drink. All you need is a place to set these gifts, a place to eat them. In their simplicity and their commonness, glory and the presence of God will be made known to you. God is with us. Let us pray. With grateful hearts, O oh God, we come to Christ's table remembering that you spoke creation into existence and pronounced it good, remembering that you called people to make your word known and declare your reign, 
remembering that you affected salvation through Jesus Christ and reconciled us to you. Be known to us now through the gift of your spirit in the breaking of bread and the drinking of cup. Renew your image within us. Restore our trust in your love. Refresh our spirits for caring service. Join us with all your people everywhere in joyous praise for your everlasting love. People of God, will you join us in stretching hands out in blessing over our communion elements? Holy One, bless each gift of bread and wine, of cracker and juice and bagel and coffee, everything we bring to each of our own tables and make them be for us signs of your presence your power, and your grace that knows no bounds or borders. As we break the bread and pour the cup, I invite you to do the same with your elements. We remember that on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal was over, he poured out a cup of wine. And he said to his disciples, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This is the bread of life for each of you. Take and eat. Ashley, the bread of life for you. Amen. Lindsay, this is the bread of life for you. Amen. Bread of life for you. 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 This is the cup of hope poured out for you. Amen. Ashley, the cup of hope for you. Amen. Cup of hope for you. Thank you. Cup of hope for you. Thank you. Cup of hope for you. Cup of hope for you. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for uniting us by baptism in the body of Christ and by this meal filling us with joy and hope. Grant that in the days ahead, our lips which have sung your praises may speak the truth. Our hearts which have known your love may look with compassion on the needs of the world. Our hands which have held this loaf and cup may be active in your servants. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
now as this Labor Day weekend continues, may Almighty God, creator of the universe, maker and shaper of all things, bless your labor as well as your rest. May Jesus Christ, the son of a carpenter, bless all the work that you do. May the Holy Spirit, ever working for the new creation, bless your service and keep you in God's purpose now and forevermore. Let us go our separate ways in peace and return again in love. Amen.